At Tokyo Game Show 2015, VanillaWare announced their brand new game that they were working on, 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim. The game was initially planned for a PlayStation 4 and a PS Vita version. Unfortunately, the Vita version was cancelled down the line. Five years after the announcement, the game is finally out on the PlayStation 4 and I got the chance to pick it up day one. Disclaimer, before I start to go all in with this review, I must say that this game is my game of the year. Now, before I jump right in, I won't spoil anything for you guys. The story in this game is top notch and you'll have a 100% better experience with the game if you stay spoiler free. And I definitely don't want to contribute in ruining your experience. The first thing that I want to talk about is the visual aspect of this game. The team at VanillaWare is well known for their very unique artistic style. It's easy to recognize them when you look at the games that they worked on. Dragon's Crown, Odd and Sphere, Muramasa, Grim Grimoire, and much more of course. Those games, just like 13 Sentinels, are unlike anything else in the art department. The developers opted for a 2D viewpoint and it works so well with 13 Sentinels. Once you start seeing your characters in a classroom and you see the sun rising from the windows and shining into the class with a beautiful glaring effect on the desks, it's very impressive. And I would even say breathtaking at times. I always say that art style matters more than actual graphics and numbers, and it's especially through for this game. Honestly, I'm blown away. Wow. Great job on the visual style. There is one other thing about the visuals that is very unique and extremely well done in this game. The character designs. In 13 Sentinels, there is 13 playable characters. All of them are very different to one another, which makes them very likable and also very distinctive. Some of the characters have a similar lifestyle, like some of them are students from the same school, but from a different eras. It, it makes for some very interesting situations. Oh, and one last thing about the characters before I move on. As you guys know, if you followed my coverage of this game in the last few months, English voice acting wasn't initially planned for this release. Voice acting was confirmed just a short while before the English release. I'll be honest, at first I was a bit worried that their job would feel rushed and that the results would be kind of a Persona 5 animation situation. Show me your true form. Miwako! Usami-chan! Did you find Shinonomi-senpai? In a word, yes, but... She ran off somewhere near the school. Guy named Sekigahara is looking for her right now. And I am extremely happy to say that the voice acting cast did a fantastic job for this game. Some personal favorite of mine are... Laura Post as Yuki Takamiya. Laura is known for her work as Kazumi in Persona 5 Royal, and also another big role that she had is Catherine in Fire Emblem Tree Houses. Her job with Takamiya was amazing, I really liked it. Now another favorite of mine was Cassandra Lee Morris playing Tomi Kisaragi, and Cassandra is also known for her role as Morgana in Persona 5, and also Sothis in Fire Emblem Three Houses. So both played a role in Persona 5 and Fire Emblem, which are two games that I like. Might had an impact on <laughs> on my choice, but I really felt like those two characters, uh, especially, did an amazing job. But the whole cast for the, the the voice acting, honestly, great work. It was really well done. Another thing that I want to talk about is time traveling. Of course, in 13 Sentinels, time travel is a big focus in the game. At first. I know that this might turn some people off because in most games, it's done very poorly. Now in this title, it is done perfectly. Believe me, I don't use the word perfection in my reviews very often, but I'm not able to find any flaws with how the team at VanillaWare handled time traveling for this release. Honestly, it is extremely well done. I think the biggest reason why I feel like time traveling is done perfectly in this release is because of how multiple characters will travel through multiple eras of time in this game and it never gets confusing. Honestly, I feel like there's a few reasons for that, let me explain. For example, when playing through a certain character's story, you'll meet your other characters, but at this point, you might not understand what they are doing in this era or in this time period at all. But later on in your playthrough, you'll play as this particular other character, and you'll see the same story sequence as in your previous playthrough, but from a new point of view of the new character. By experiencing multiple point of views of the same situation, it allows the player to understand the meaning of 
the way that the events are shown to you. Oh, and one funny thing about time travel when I'm when I'm talking about that. The reaction to some of the characters to being in a different era is hilarious. A quick example that comes to mind is when Miura, a young soldier from the 1940s, time travels to the 1980s and he's almost traumatized of girls for two reasons. First, they're going to school, which was uncommon in the 1940s, and second, they're wearing miniskirts. And it's extremely funny to just see his reaction. He's like, oh, why are you dressed that way? He's like, he's not sure. And it's, it's really cute. I really like that. It's a small thing, but it's something that I appreciated. And there's a lot of small touches like this that made the game like... You see that the developers cared for what they made for this release, honestly. Now, as you can see, a big part of this game is played through visual novel sequences or some may call this point-and-click story gameplay. This is the main mode and it's called Remembrance. This mode is playable in story chapters, and most of them take from 20 to 30 minutes to complete, which is perfect in my opinion to keep you engaged without losing your focus. When you are in the menu of this mode, you can choose whose story you want to play through and in which order. You're not forced to complete a first character's story, then another one, it's very non-linear in that aspect. There is also a twist. Sometimes when you reach a certain chapter of a character's story, you will get blocked from further progression until you do something else. This particular something else can be multiple things. It can be progressing through another character's story and reaching a certain point, and I must say that this is mandatory for a good understanding of the story. Now, another thing is maybe beating a certain level in Destruction, which is the combat mode of this game, which I'll talk about more in depth later in my review. Or it can also be unlocking a certain number of mystery points in the analysis mode. Uh, this mode is basically a glossary of everything for this game, from the characters to the story. It is extremely well done and very fun to spend, uh, to spend time into, for sure. The way that the story is presented to the player is done extremely well. As I mentioned, they are controlling how far you get in a specific character's story before blocking you by also giving you freedom to choose who you want to play as first. It is genius. Not only do they make sure that you understand everything that way, but it also allows the player to stay invested and intrigued in, in the story for the whole game. I know that I talked about time travel before, and I talk about how you play through the story, but I haven't actually described the plot of the story. And before I begin going all in about the story, I need to tell you guys that with this whole tr time travel thing and with 13 characters playable, when I was covering the Japanese release of this game, I'm being honest here. I was saying to myself that this would be a whole mess of a story, and I'm glad to say that I was really wrong. First of all, it is a very complex and deep story, and I don't mean that in a bad way at all. I'll summarize everything in the best way that I can, but I'll say it right away, I can't do the story justice by describing everything. You definitely have to experience it yourself. As the title of the game suggests, the story is spent by playing with 13 different characters, all very different from one to another. This story is playable in all of those 13 different perspectives, and it is definitely gripping. Most of the story is spent in the 1980s, but you also experience some of the story in the 1940s after World War II, in the 2020s, and also in the 2100s. With some of the characters, you'll travel through multiple eras, which makes for some very unique and entertaining moments, as mentioned previously. The story starts to get really interesting very quickly, which is something that I appreciated. When some of your characters start to have dreams where they're in some type of massive robots called Sentinels, Sentinels are giant robots that pilots are able to control with their brains. Pilots are the characters that you play as. This is where the title of the infamous Persona with Robot article comes from. Yeah, kind of stupid, I know. Some of those pilots are fighting against the Kaijus, which are alien machines that are threatening Earth. What is very interesting at first is that you don't really understand your dreams until you realize that multiple characters they have similar dreams, and that those dreams are actually foreshadowing another time period, the future or the past. Plus, in those dreams, the characters see each other, even when they don't necessarily know each other in reality in the present. While all of that is happening, four characters are well aware of the existence of the Sentinels and of the Kaijos, as well as the possibility offered by time traveling. They also know that they must travel through different eras using Sentinels to answer safety of the world. This group consists of Renia Goto, Shihiro Morimura, Tetsuya Ida, and of course Tsukasa Okino. These four have a similar goal, to recruit pilots 
for their sentinels, of course, to win the war against the kaijus. To do so, again, I'm not spoiling anything, but you'll see that they have to use some type of shady methods that will make some of the pilots lose their memory of being in a certain time period. So they might take a certain pilot, put him or her in another time period, like in the past, for example, and make them forget that they existed in the present. Crazy, but it works. All of those events are placed perfectly during a playthrough of the game so you don't get lost as the player. For me, it's extremely impressive that the team were able to create such a complex story with so many playable characters and for it to make perfect sense as a complete package. It's not easy to do time travel properly in a game, nor is it easy to create 13 different characters that are all, without any exceptions, extremely attractive and memorable. This story exceeded my expectations in every single way. There is one very unique mechanic that I want to talk about before I wrap things up with the story. It is called the Thought Cloud. This is a feature that allows you to see what your character is thinking at all times during your playthrough. Plus, it's another feature that was great because it made sure that you're fully aware of what's going on at all times. They make sure that the mystery is still going on and that your questions remain unanswered until the right time. And that is a very good thing. For me, I'll say it right away, this is the best sci-fi story I have ever experienced in a video game. It is a complete masterpiece. Now that I give you a good glimpse of the story, I feel like I must stress that 13 characters is not a problem at all in this game. You'll often see multiple of your characters appear in another character's story and it's great. You'll see them talk and interact together at all times and it is really good. It is basically the contrary to a complaint that I had with a game that I really love. Octopath Traveler. In this game, you have eight characters, all with great stories, but they almost don't interact together. So there was basically no addition to the story of having eight characters. It was just a great separate story, basically. In 13 Sentinels, on the other end, all the characters have their own great and interesting story, but they also have one big story in common. Amazing. Here is what some of y'all have been waiting for, the combat system. What I want to do is explain to all of you how the combat system works, and then, of course, what I think of it. This combat system is a RTS combat system, real-time strategy combat. The combat is playable in the mode Destruction, and it is playable by waves, so one wave is one battle, one mission. Before every battle, you choose which of your characters you want to put on the field. You can fight with six sentinel pilots at the same time and they all, they all have different abilities. Speaking of the abilities, you are the one who is able to customize every single one of those abilities. You can choose the ability of all of your characters and you can also level up those abilities. The customizations options are a good balance of being simple and also very complete at the same time. It just works very well and it is very easy to understand and to get into. Once you choose your characters, you're ready to start the wave. A wave takes to from 40 seconds to 10 minutes depending on the wave that you're at, the difficulty level that you chose, and the reflection time that you take before acting. Before what, Because when you click on a specific character to choose his move, it stops time. Which means that you, th you can take all the time that you want before you do a move. But as soon as you engage, everything keeps going. So this is where... RTS comes into play. You can move your characters on field, you can choose their actions depending on their placements, and of course your main goal is to protect the terminal, which is your base. And then of course defeat all the kaijus. Speaking of the kaijus, there is a bunch of them. There's a lot of variety here for your enemies. Some of them are flying kaijus, why? which means that you can't kill them with melee, while others are going to explode after you beat them, which you can take advantage of that if there's a lot of enemies around them, if you shoot them from a distance. It works, it makes the enemies around it explode. So you'll, you'll, you'll see a bunch of different type of enemies and you try to take advantage of your enemies depending on which pilots you put on the battlefield and the placement of each one of your pilots. There's a lot of strategy involved. This type of combat system is not very common in games these days. I'm fully aware of that. So I understand that it might feel a bit overwhelming at first, but I must say that I found this combat system very intuitive and easy to learn. Plus, it's very fun. The fact that it's not common in the in games these days, I just thought it was refreshing. Good job on the choice for the battle system, in my opinion. Oh, and before I forget, the characters, they often talk together depending on your actions during combat sequences. It is very fun to hear during combat. It is very fun to hear them talk during combat. And again, it's just another small touch that allows you to learn more about your characters. 
This game takes around 30 hours to beat, but of course if you want to get all the best ranks in destruction and you want to get all the collectibles in the analysis section of the game, you want to, to be able to get all of them and unlock everything, I'm sure you can spend more than 30 hours on, the, on this game for sure, but 30 hours I thought was a good length for to have a good pacing in the story. Honestly, I had a blast completing this release. So in conclusion, I must say that everything surrounding the characters is extremely well done, from the story to amazing voice acting, it is just perfect. From the fantastic story to the very unique addictive combat system, 13 Sentinels nails it out of the park on every aspect. This game is an easy recommendation for me to all of you guys. Please do yourselves a favor, give this game a chance and play this masterpiece of a game. It is easily one of the best games of this last decade in my opinion. A good 10 out of 10 for me. I hope you guys enjoyed the review, I spent a lot of time on this one because I wanted to do this game justice, I hope that I did. Uh, if you decide to try this game out, please let me know what you think, and if you're thinking about buying this game later, I would definitely like to know. As always, if you like the content, please give me a thumbs up, that really helps to support the, the channel, and if you're not familiar with the channel, I cover Atlas Shin Megami Tensei Persona stuff, so please consider subscribing if you like the content, and we will see you guys in another video. Bye!